San Francisco. It's the Cube covering Sumo Logic Illuminate 2018. Now here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're at the Hyatt Regency San Francisco International Airport in Burlingame, but Sumo Logic Illuminate 2018. About 600 people, I think it's three times bigger than the conference last year, it's growing really fast. They got a really interesting thing going on with kind of the silent disco. All the sessions are in one room, everybody's got different headphones on, so you can listen to any session. I've never, never seen that before, but we're excited to have a partner of theirs on, a big announcement today. He's Eldon Sprickerhoff, the founder of eCentire. Welcome. Jeff, great to be here. Absolutely, so you guys had a big announcement today. What was your big announcement? So we have formally partnered with Sumo Logic to work on, uh, so extend our visibility into native uh, applications, cloud, everything within hybrid security. Okay, so let's back up a little bit for sure. folks that aren't familiar with eCentire. What are you guys all about? How long have you been around? What's your core, uh, your core business? Sure. So we're a managed detection and, and response firm. So basically we're looking at the attacks that made it through all the infrastructure that was currently in place. Uh, you know, firewalls and, and uh, web application firewalls and, and, and everything that you put in place. And I used to call it embedded incident response, but the idea is to hunt for the attacks as they're going on. So time is a very, you know, of, the, of the essence to, to detect these attacks and shoot them down. Um, we've been in business for, it's almost 17 years, so it was in 2001, and this is, you know, the biggest thing was um, at the time to, to have full visibility into attacks, to build playback attacks, um, to build a build our own threat intelligence and so on. This is, so, you know, over 15 years worth of this kind of practice and process put into place. Uh, it's, it, it's something that was very revolutionary at the time and the market is just sort of catching up right, to it now. Right. Now the other thing that of course changed significantly since 17 years ago was public cloud and the adoption of public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud. So how has that really changed your market? Was that a great new opportunity? I assume your original uh, solution was on-prem. Yep. Suddenly yep. now all these workloads are moving to the prowl. So how did you, or cloud, how did you guys respond to that? You know, so we know that again, logging is, is a very important piece of getting a, a full visibility into attacks that are going on the network. Um, the, the move into the cloud, of course, is, is, is uh, it's inevitable. It, you know, it's never going to be stopped. Uh, and it's something where we, we had a chance to sit back and we said, look, we recognize that there's a need for this kind of uh, visibility. Uh, we don't want to build it ourselves. Some of our strength has, been come, has come from uh, building up the, the data analytics and so on you know, from, the, uh, from the various signals that we've got. Right. Uh, what we're going to end up doing, you know, rather than building that ourselves, let's find the partner that can do it the best and see what is the most complementary to our methodology and our process. And so we looked at about a dozen uh, different firms that, that offered this kind of thing um, and went with Sumo Logic as, as a result. The, you know, one of the biggest pieces was even, you know, a lot of our clients are in the mid-size uh, market. They're not as, uh, as necessarily enthusiastic about moving to cloud, although pretty much everybody has some kind of hybrid piece there. Uh, even our most you know, anti-cloud client said, you know, basically in five years, 70 plus percent of our apps and our workload will be in the cloud. Um, but they're not in any necessary, in a rush to get there. Right, the, the, right. So again, this was a, a realization that it, it's, it's not going to go away. We need to find a, um, a partner that, again, works best with our sort of data analytics pipeline and the same kind of thought, thought process behind that. Um, and, you know, not being hampered by the necessary, you know, necessarily being uh, on-prem. Uh, and that was again, that was why we eventually right. we, we went with Sumo Logic. So how how has uh, your business changed fundamentally in this kind of hybrid cloud world? We also have all this crazy you know API economy. Everything is connected to everything else. And then you've got this kind of interesting uh, attribute of many cloud workloads, which is they don't last very long, or or they change very very quickly. They blow up. They come down. They're turned on. They they turn off. How has that impacted the way you guys get your work done? So you know, we're very comfortable with ephemeral workloads and attacks, but the idea being, again, be able to respond very quickly to threats, even you know, given servers that are, again, very short-lived, um, makes it even more important that the data that we pull from our existing clients and, and other vectors, uh, you know, such as you know, indicators of compromise or indicators of concern, that we can move very quickly, that we don't have the, the luxury of you know, the next day getting right. analysis or sort of a nine to five sort of analysis and, and, and response window. Um, that shrinks the windows even down further. Right, so the other thing that's pretty interesting, uh, you know, you just said you got like 15, 18 years worth of data. Um, 
how much of that can you use to build machine learning and, and AI to see, you know, kind of patterns, things you've seen before, uh, and, and to build some of that intelligence behind. I always think of the, the, the poor guy that rips off a bank for the first time, right? It's his right. first time, he needed some cash, he got stupid and went in and grabbed. Right. But the right. policeman has seen that thing you know, that methodology, a thousand right, times, right, right? right, right he right. knows exactly where to look, he knows right where the bodies are buried. So I would imagine you've got a tremendous amount of insight that you guys can leverage in your own kind of threat detection and, and threat analysis. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's exactly, so you know, the, my role as the chief innovation officer is to drive value out of the data that we've gathered. And we've, you know, again, when we have you know, petabytes across our client base of stored data, whether it's attack data or metadata, um, I say there's a lot of gold in them that are hills. Right, and right. You know, part of it is, do we have the right tooling to be able to access and use that data? What kind of inferences can we make from things that we've seen before? And so, you know, sort of like the broken windows methodology, so that you expect that a certain neighborhood will be, is, is more likely to be attacked and, and, and so on. So there's, it, it's, it's a very exciting time to be in this space, right? right? And, and again, given the, the you know, almost 17 years worth of data and knowledge and process, uh, it's, I think we have, a, we have a head start across against our competitors, our you know, would-be competitors, uh, and having access to this data and the sort of the tooling to access this data that we're getting from Sumo Logic is, is going to be critical in our success. Right, so don't share any trade secrets, but I'm, I'm curious how the strategies for the bad guys have evolved when they know that a significant amount of, of, of what they're going after sits in a public cloud that's got a whole nother layer of security and infrastructure that's been put in place by Azure or AWS or GCP. Yeah. How has that changed the way that they attack those opportunities and then how has that impacted your business and what you're doing about it? You know, so there's a lot of sort of interesting use ca edge cases that come out of this. Some of the things that we've seen um, that are, that are again, sort of challenges will be that there's, a, there's attackers that have got quite a bit more sophisticated and rather going off into sort of edge cases like one by one attacks that they go up a level and they're attacking the infrastructure themselves. So, you know, it, we, we've seen cases where um, even this year we discovered an attack against a, um, a management of endpoint solutions. So they, it's a packaging of, of software that goes down to endpoints. And they attacked that vendor in the cloud themselves. So that was hosted, you know, a hosted solution that you would not necessarily have seen if, unless you were looking for some very unusual characteristics. And th this is not, you're, you're not going to get that from the public cloud. You know, given that, that shared uh, model in the cloud, you're responsible for a good portion of the infrastructure that you, that you support. Right. Uh, it, it, require, it, it means that you have to get past sort of things like um, well-known signatures and you, you really have to focus on more of the unusual behavior, build a pro baseline and then be able to dig deep into um, the attack vectors and, and you know, every single part of the layer that, you know, whether it's not just sort of IP addresses that are bad, but it's, it's, it, it requires, again, as much more visibility in places that you may not necessarily have visibility. Um, you know, so every cloud vendor that, that you know, that is, especially the big three, they're ramping up their, the, the data that's available. So right. I think AWS still leads with, you know, a lot of the things with uh, Macy recently from the machine learning piece. Um, so they're trying to give more visibility, and, and what you do with that data is what's critical. Right. Once you, you know, once they give you that visibility, what can you do with that data? Can you rapidly make decisions on it and be able to push that out across a complete client base? Right. So I'd love to get your perspective again. You've been doing this for a long time on, on kind of the change of the landscape from the kid hacker who's got to go in and change his grade from a, a C to a B or he's playing yeah. games or he wants to put some splashy page up right. to now you know, state sponsored hackers which you know, are much more strategic, much better resourced, much more sophisticated. You know, how have you seen that kind of evolve and how is, are you and the industry been responding directly to that? Yeah, we've, so we've seen again some really incredible uh, nation state attack vectors. You know, some of the most sophisticated tooling that you can imagine um, we've seen from, and, and it's difficult often to, to be able to say that's absolutely nation state, right? Attribution is always tough and I'm right. loath to do this. There are cases that, you know, across our client base that we have seen attacks that were so sophisticated and with a purpose, like a very fine purpose, they only could have been from nation state. It is the most, you know, without having to go out on a limb at all. It's like, right. it just makes sense. And so it is, it is incredible 
how determined and how well tooled these attack vectors are. Right. And this is uh, this is not hyperbole. I am I'm a zero hyperbole guy. Right, right. And I assume the safe assumption, probably the good working assumption, just like no trust networking, is you're going to get breached somehow, some way, sometime. Yep, yep. And it's really about identifying it, responding to it, shutting it off, and trying to keep that, that window closed for the next time around. You know, I even go so far as to say it's not a question of when, like you are. Right, you right. are, they're already in, right? You just somebody, haven't found yeah. them. Somebody, <laughs> whether it's an external vector, you know, or an insider, there's, you know, the odds are good if you are of any reasonable size, there's somebody who's doing something that right, should not. Right. All right, so last question. Yeah. We were just at AT&T uh, Sparks event earlier this, this week, talking about 5G, right? And 5G is coming. They did their first call. AT&T's rolling out to all these cities. Right. So 5G and IoT and industrial IoT are suddenly going to multiply your, your threat. Attack base. Uh, yep. Attack base by orders of magnitude. What do you, you know, kind of what are some of your thoughts as an industry veteran? How are you preparing for that? Do people really understand what's coming down the pike with 5G? I don't think they do. Not at all, <laughs> not at all. You know, we're, when we're talking about, again, the biggest things that we're working on right now are how do we deal with scale and, um, and visibility of, of signals. So, you know, a lot of systems are, do a great job of generating signals, but they're not necessarily equipped to deal with the response piece. And that's, those are some of the challenges that we're dealing with. How do you deal with increase in scale, an increase of, of, of vector, a uh, number of vectors, attackers, and the, the size of the attack space themselves. It's crazy, crazy stuff coming. It's, it's a great time to be in this industry. <laughs> that's true. All right, Elder Will, uh, congrats on the announcement and thanks for uh, taking a, a few minutes with us today. Thank you very much. All right, he's Eldon, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at Sumo Logic Illuminate 2018. Thanks for watching.